Hey, Mr. Baldwin. Hey, Ms. Awad. Hey, we're starting to talk about streams. Love it. We got a really cool picture of a stream going on I here. I love that. Taken from an airplane, obviously. Lots of really great stream features. We're going to be talking about all these in the next couple of videos, so hang on. It's cool. going to be a nice, non-turbulent ride on this plane. <laughs> All right, a couple of quick learning targets. You guys can pause, see where you're at before the video, and by the end of the video, you should be able to do these five things. And make sure you know the vocab. All right, so let's take a look at the vocabulary first. So we have definitions of a couple of words here, the first one being a hydrograph. Yes, it's a graph. And, and it's, it's about hydro. <laughs> it's a Yeah, exactly. It's a graph that shows discharge in a river over time. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we haven't talked about discharge yet, so what's discharge? Well, discharge is just the amount of water that passes through a river in a given time. So it's usually like a volume of water per second or per minute, whatever the, the unit is. Okay. So like a small trickling stream would have a lower discharge, but like the big Mississippi River has a much greater discharge. And it's like if you were at the end of a river catching it all in a big bucket and you could measure how much came out of a stream over a certain time. Mm -hmm. So that's what the hydrographs are going to show us is how much water is going through that stream over time. Mm -hmm. And then we have another term called watershed. And this is just an area where all the water flows to the same place. Um, so like picture if in a bathtub all the water that falls in the bathtub is going to stay in the bathtub. So it's all going to flow towards that same drain. Okay, and remembering that water flows downhill, so it has to be that you would divide one watershed from another by having a higher area of land, mm -hmm. which is kind of hard to think about when we look out the windows here and we think it's so flat. But in fact, there is enough topography around here that we do have watershed divisions, even in flatter areas like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the last one's land cover. We're going to talk a lot about uh, the type of land use that's uh, done in an area. So like, we're used to urban and developed around here. Um, but like if you go to a forest, it's a lot different interaction with the water there. Uh, agriculture, we're talking about you know farming, mm -hmm. uh, grassland, talk about prairie, okay. and then talk about permeable, permeable versus impermeable. And we should remember those words from groundwater, right? Okay, so let's go on. A couple other things that you need to recognize, the first being this term of divide or continental divide and thinking about the fact that water flows from high to low, and there are two sides to the high areas. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice map here on the top left that's showing what we call the continental divide in North America. And then the bigger map on the right, if you notice, that continental divide runs from all the way up in Alaska, all the way through Canada, kind of snakes its way through the Rocky Mountains mm -hmm. in the U.S., and then all the way down into Central America, Mexico and Central America. So like in the picture in the upper left, all the water that falls on the left side of the Continental Divide, that's going to go to the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. And then if it falls on the right, it can actually go to two places. It can go north to Hudson Bay or south towards the Gulf of Mexico. Right, depending on which of the river systems it ends up in. Okay, so the Continental Divide itself, though, is that high area that separates drainage basins. And we're going to talk about drainage basins, I think, here in a minute. And one of the neat things, too, is actually right here in uh, near Des Plaines, there's a continental divide there, and it's not even that tall. Mm -hmm. There you go. So drainage basins are kind of similar to watersheds in that drainage basins are areas of land that are drained by a river system. Okay. And a river system could include lots of different watersheds. So like a smaller river can drain a smaller area, but then join up to a bigger river mm -hmm. and then becomes part of that watershed? Well, the watershed is the smaller river. Okay. The land that drains into the smaller river. Okay. The drainage basin would be all the smaller rivers watersheds together gotcha, okay. that go into one major river. So think about the big one for the U.S., the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. There are lots of smaller watersheds mm -hmm. that make up that big drainage system that includes all the little rivers that flow into the Mississippi. So like the Des Plaines River watershed mm -hmm. would flow into the Mississippi drainage basin. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Okay. And, and this then, is, oh, sorry. go ahead. Uh, this is kind of building off what we just said there with like a tributary. It's just a smaller stream that flows into a larger stream. Mm -hmm. So for us, we're in the Des Plaines River Valley. So all the water that falls in Des Plaines or in, around our neck of the woods 
uh, flows down the Plains River, and it becomes a tributary of the Illinois River. Yep. So it flows into the larger Illinois River, and if you keep going down the Illinois River, it would flow into the larger Mississippi River. Okay. There we go. So that's tributary. Okay, now we go back to hydrographs. Mm -hmm. So we have a pretty complex graph here. Let's start by defining the axes. First of all, the easy one is the x-axis. So we have years 1995, 96, 97, and 98. Some kind of older data, but this is a really nice hydrograph to look at to understand them initially. Mm -hmm. And then the letters are the months in each one of those years. So we have essentially three years of data shown in this hydrograph. Mm -hmm. And, and then, then if, the y-axis. If we look at the y-axis, they call it the stage in feet, and this is kind of like the discharge. It's the amount of water that's flowing through the stream at a given point in time. So you can see there's a couple peaks. What do you think those peaks represent? So the peaks would be increases in the discharge mm -hmm. at a certain time. So if we look at the very first peak on the left-hand side, that December 1995, the January, the February, those three peaks, that's the amount of water that was in that particular stream at that particular time in 1995. Okay. But notice that it doesn't start at zero. Mm -hmm. It starts, in this case, at about five. And there's that five level kind of all the way across from 1995 to 1998. What's that all about? Uh, well, that's actually called the base level of the stream. And Good. that's where if a stream's flowing not during a rain event or a flooding event, that's the height of the stream that's going to be kind of normal conditions that we see. So it's kind of like the typical level for that stream, mm -hmm. where the higher levels are after a rain event yeah, and we or can, after a snow event. And we can see the base level continues on. It doesn't really change too much. It stays right around the same cool. depth. Okay, so this is for one stream over three years' time period. There are other types of hydrographs. Look at the next one that we have for you guys. So this one we're showing six or seven, maybe even eight different lines there. Um, so what's the difference between these lines here? So this is six different streams. Mm -hmm. So A stream gauge on six different streams that shows this time period from um, June 1st, mm -hmm. 2008, up through July 31st. So two months of time, essentially. Okay. But for six different streams. Oh, and it might in just six different locations, too, because if you see the purple, like the Kickapoo River at Lafarge, mm -hmm. so that's the station or like the location where they took the data. Yep. But then Kickapoo River at Steuben was the same river, but just different, different location. Different location. Yep. yep. And so. I'm seeing kind of two big groups, maybe a third one in there. Why would the Kickapoo River have different shapes than, say, I think it's the Crawford and the Rock River? Okay, so we have, we have three peaks that are very pointed. Mm -hmm. Let's look at those three peaks first. If you think about what happens when it starts to rain, if it rains here around Maine East, where there are a lot of parking lots, a lot of streets, a lot of driveways, a lot of paved over, impermeable surfaces, the rain can't soak in. The rain is going to run off quickly. Oh, yeah. It's going to get to the stream quickly, and that's going to show as a high discharge very close to the time of the rain event. So that's where the height of the river is going to increase really rapidly. It's going to happen really fast. Yeah, and then the runoff from that rain event, mm -hmm. because it's not soaking in, is going to end quickly as well. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a sharp pointed peak. You're going to have a increase, a major increase in the water discharge in that stream, mm -hmm. and then it's going to drop back down to the base level pretty quickly. Okay. So I think that's the first three pointed peaks, and then we've got these gently sloping peaks. Now these ones, they're spread out over a huge area, yeah. so the water must have taken its time to get there and kind of stayed there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got to be something that's more of a permeable layer. So it's got to be something where the water's soaking into the ground, and it's taking its time working its way down towards the stream levels. So the amount of water getting into the stream mm -hmm. at any one time in that two-month period mm -hmm. is smaller mm -hmm. and spread out over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing on the graph there. And, like, flooding wouldn't be as bad there, and it would be spread out over a much greater period of time. Yeah. Okay. So what I think we're seeing here is the pointed peaks mm -hmm. are a more urban or suburban oh, yeah. land cover, uh -huh. and those more gradual peaks are maybe grassland, forest, agriculture, someplace where there's a different land cover. And we're going to explore land cover pretty extensively in class, right? Yeah, really cool lab that we get to do with those. Okay, cool. All right, so you guys have a quiz to take on this one, so hop out, jump on your class webpage, grab your quiz, take that, we'll see you in class tomorrow. See you later, guys. Bye.